Love. Love Line may contain sexually oriented content. With sexually oriented content. Listener discretion is advised. Listener discretion is advised. Listener discretion is advised. This is Love Line. Love Line. Love Line. Love Line. With Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Hey, everybody. It's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. And tonight we're thrilled to have Seth McFarlane here from the Family Guy. How you doing? How are you guys? We're doing good, Drew. Uh, he's like a side girl. So. Oh, <laughs> hitty. I'm just quivering. Oh, come Tingling. on. Let me and let me say this about the Family Guy. I feel like the guy who discovered the band. You know, I was yes. into REM yes. way back in '79. Yes. You, know? we keep you, you were there from the start. He was, were... and we keep thanking him for it, and he keeps reminding us of it. Yeah, I know, but I have to because people. You know, that's that's like the. Uh, I thought that I told you that chick was hot. Yeah. <laughs> I, it somehow, it, yeah. oh yeah, yeah. Denise Richards, man, when when, when <laughs> she was doing that 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 a, that alien movie with the spiders and stuff, that uh, Starship Troopers, man, I she was hot. By the I, way, you, I, you did point her out then. I, I pointed I her out, <laughs> and I want credit. That's all I'm saying. You guys I remember climbed, you say there was this girl that uh, yeah, you guys climbed on you you, uh, you Johnny come lately. So well, yeah, you know, it's it's, it's worth later. giving you your credit. You, you you've been plugging us since uh, since day one. Some well, people when, are leaders know? and some people are followers. I tell you, and no, I no just kidding. follow on here. And, and let me let me uh, yes, you do, Drew, and you do a good job. Now be Thank quiet. You. The thing about. Um, the Family Guy is, uh, it's got legs, this show. I, guys at the office over at Kimmel's Place talking about it all the time. Just today, not, I didn't say, oh, Seth MacFarlane's coming in. They just started bringing it up. And uh, in a way, now I've seen every episode four times, <laughs> and, and now everyone else is getting on board with it. So I feel uh, like a little left out, like I shot my wad a year ago. Now I just watch the ones with me in it. But, uh, so I'm looking forward to the new episodes coming out. But it, it must be nice because, I mean, obviously there was a time uh, two years ago when you thought this thing had a fork stuck in it. Yeah, we, we were, you know, the show was dead. It was gone. And, and uh, you know, it was the, the, the DVD sales and the Cartoon Network airings that, that brought it back. And it's, they, they tell me that's the first time it's happened with, net, with a network television show. It's got to be uh, it's got to be nice and give you a little bit of faith in humanity and the human spirit. Yes. That, uh, and and the, the system we call television, too. Yes. That it can respond to that. Yeah, that uh, people can recognize good work, support it. The networks can understand respond that to it, and yeah. respond to it yeah. accordingly. So uh, 16 new episodes you're working on, I overheard you say. Yes, uh, 16 episodes of American Dad, which is the new show, and then 35 new episodes oh. of Family Guy. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Which Mother will bring us, to, uh, bring us to 75. So we're... we're we're pushing a hundred. You should see. Uh, I mean, he, you know, over at E, where E is, he owns a he has an entire floor in that building, mm -hmm. and they do everything from the voice they, to the he, pictures. He's only one floor, though, Drew. I mean, just to be fair. He, well, they're, they're two he has the one, only one point five. He has the only one point five. Okay, Drew, I'm just kidding. Don't you get the puss <laughs> off your face? I'm trying to follow. Go ahead. Too, too, too quick. So you went over there and did, did, uh, did VO voice. work and, over there. And But this guy, I was just telling Stryker, he's like over there like erasing, you know, looking at angles of drawings. I mean, every little aspect of every yeah. single frame. Yeah, I know. Whoa. He's got his thumb in every pie over I'm, there. Anal I'm, retentive, I'm and there's nothing part. I can do about it. Yeah. <laughs> you you got to be if you want, uh, if you want the... Uh, good final product mm. and seth of course oh crank anchors uh, on tonight by <laughs> the way yeah. final product 10 30 on uh, comedy central got to thank uh, seth for doing some uh, great voices on uh, oh, crank hey, anchor man. thanks for having me man all right so uh b before we get to it and uh we can uh, talk about american dad which is uh coming out another animated series from uh, the mind of seth mcfarland which is coming out after the super bowl that, i saw a clip of that the dad is a cia agent an overzealous cia agent where? Yeah. Where did you see the clip? Uh, at when I was over visiting these guys. Oh, okay. A and uh, the daughter's sort of a hippie, as I recall. Yeah, it's 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 kind but, of. Uh, but, but the great thing is they live with an alien Paul Lind, mm. an mm. alien who talks like alien Paul Lind. Alien talks Perfect. like Paul Lind. Okay, it's it's kind of a Family Guy meets All in the Family sort of thing. It's a little more political. It's it's uh, mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know skews uh, kind of left wing. It's it's uh, you know it'll. 
As opposed to the highly conservative <laughs> humor of family guys. Exactly. Well, as opposed to the radically right wing views of uh, yeah. Peter. Of Stewie. Is, uh, you know, animation's expensive to do, but mm. ultimately, if a show gets like Friends, then, sh- then that's got to get more expensive if everyone's getting a million bucks uh, an episode. Is uh how do how does it work out like do you know what it, you know how the price is compared to like just a little moderately successful sitcom? It's, it's about the same. I mean, you, you, the for, Korean sweat house he runs, color in the yeah, picture. Right. They, they really start demanding. Yeah, they, that really keeps the cost right. down. Yeah. But uh, you know, for for a, for an animated half hour sitcom, it's about the same as as a show like you know, say that '70s show, or, right. or it, it, it hovers around a million per episode. I think obviously, when something like Friends, it shoots way up. Yeah. Or The Simpsons, you know, they spend a lot more, but. But you don't get the uh, st- you know what I would do here's what what you should have done and maybe you did if you're smart you did this mm-hmm. I hate when people do that because you never did it if you're smart yeah, you would have yeah. done the following I probably like, didn't do it I didn't it do that but I am I am making right now <laughs> if that helps <laughs> um, I would bring everyone be Mila Kunis and Alex Borstein and bring bring uh, everyone everyone in and the day I hired them have a person standing next to them doing the same voice. Oh. Just let him know. And just to keep, him on notice. keep him on their toes. Now, this guy, he's, he, go back to the Ralphs and, and do the stocking. Okay, so he's working over there. I believe, I believe that was you, Mila. She stepped right in. Oh, she did? Yeah. Did there some, was, there yeah. was an original Meg. Oh, there was an original Meg? She, she, uh, she stepped, she, she, she uh, quit her job at uh, Walmart and came to work for us. Who was the? Oh, you, well, we don't even know who the original Meg was, right? Did she there, do there, a few there, there have been three. Uh, yeah, the, the, the original Meg was Lacey Chabert. Oh, and, from uh, uh, the Party of Five. From Party of Five, and and she, we never really got the full story as to why she she couldn't do the rest of the series. Yeah. We heard it was busy. I don't even. Know. Yeah, it's yeah. Like she was. It was some sort of. I don't. I don't know. She's like the I first drummer from the Partridge yeah, family. Yeah, she was wonderful. She did a great uh, job. Unfortunately, uh, she's ending up like uh, somebody from the, the original Beatles. Yeah. Oh, you, you know mean uh, like Pete Best Pete or Best, something? Yeah. Sure, there weren't that many original. You know, <laughs> but, but you know what I mean? It's, it's, well, <laughs> let me go through my Rolodex. There are thousands Shemp. of them. Uh, all right, so uh, she passed on. Then there was a second Meg. Uh, she she was she was the uh, uh, she, well she was the first one that aired. There, there was right. there was one that uh, uh, never actually aired. And then Lacey was the second one. And then uh, Mila was uh, Mila's done f- by far the majority of the shows. And and. Uh, yeah, you know. I don't even remember Lacey, although now it sounds familiar now that I hear it. When you watch it now, you hear Mila. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. she's yeah. great. She, 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 she brings bite to that but, character. But, but, but I mean, even when you watch the old me, the old Meg voices, yeah. you kind of you superimpose Mila on top of Oh, really? Of, yeah, that's yeah. what I'm doing. Yeah, you kind of yeah. hear her, I guess. Yeah. Is, is Mila doing Lacey doing Meg? Or Mila's, just Mila's doing her, doing own, her thing? own thing. She's, she's doing... Uh, she's, 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 this, her, her Meg has... Uh, has uh, some Keith. spark to it. She's not afraid to call her father a fat bastard. Sure. You know, she's... Uh... Speaking of voices, uh, yeah, Seth, I don't yeah. mean to cut you off, but, you know, Seth and I, you know, we mm. spoke. Yeah. I went to a party of his where we didn't speak. <laughs> Locked himself in a room. Yeah, I heard, I heard about that after hours. the fact. You, you... I was looking all over for him. <laughs> he has a, is a grand piano, by the way, in his yes. uh, living room, which... Uh, What's uh, your musical the ladies training? know it means business. You know, I've I've been playing that thing for about ten years, and uh, but I mean the songs that Brian sings, for instance, are pretty amazing. Well, you know, I, I gotta give I, I I took voice lessons for a few years. I mean, I I took a lot of singing lessons when I was younger, but when yeah. I came out here, I was referred to to a uh, a couple both in their nineties who uh, used to do God everything they used to, they used to do. Uh, yeah, they were in the Henry Mancini chorus. They did, a, you know, wow. the old Johnny Mercer song. They just did every everything you can possibly imagine. And they, uh, I trained with them for a few years because we were doing all these musical numbers on the show, and and it really uh, was great vocally. Was, yeah, yeah. Did you write training. the lyrics and the music and stuff? Well, you're you're sort of transposing, you're ripping music off. Some oh, of it, some some of, it. some of it's oh, original. We we have a, a, a an a, a album coming out that's oh. that's done in the style of the. Uh, Rat Pack at the Sands. Oh my God! CD. It's a big fifty-five piece orchestra, and uh, wow, it's uh, it's really it's taken us almost a year to do it. Uh, and the, the music is uh, by Walter Murphy, who did the Family Guy theme, and and uh, unbelievably talented uh, composer. Used to arrange for Johnny Carson, Brian, Brian, Services. and uh, Stewie on the road in the uh, train was a great uh, musical episode. Yeah, it's yes. that kind of that was from a uh, that was an old Hope Crosby song. Yeah. From the, that's what it road to Morocco. It, yeah, it was a road. Which I'm sure the kids are all familiar with. Oh, they they all first <laughs> off they ran the, out and bought the DVD. The kids love Bob Hope. Came out. The, yeah. the other song that impressed was when Brian was singing to the old opera singer. Yeah, 
That, that, that was an yeah. original song that we wrote for the... Uh, that I was listening and thinking, oh my God, this is difficult stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really it's good. It's advanced. Yeah. It's sort of uh, that, that that won us uh, won us uh, Nobel one, one of our only Prize. Emmys. Oh, Emmys! Oh, yeah. yeah, there we yeah. go. <laughs> it's nice. Uh, all right. So what I was saying before I got uh, diverted with the uh, grand piano was is you know, Seth and I I consider us uh, you know friends. Yeah, absolutely, we're pals. And uh, I talked about getting a little voiceover work on the uh, new Family Guy, and uh, lo and behold, Drew goes in and does a session before moi. And, uh, you know, I am kind of the voice of death. Uh, I don't know if you got me. Nobody died in the first five episodes. Well, I'm I'm just saying, Seth. uh, Yeah, death death will uh, will, will reappear very, very soon. We've been been, been kicking around uh, some ideas for that character. I'm I'm saying I'm versatile. Fret not. All right. I do. I do. Me. I can do this voice, and I can do. I can do it with one nostril closed. <laughs> that's the left one, and I can do it with the right one, and I can do it with them both open. So yes, right there, true. that's three things to that's work. That's three with. voices. Yeah. True. Yes. Yes. Good. Three. You look like three. you're going for something. <laughs> no, I was just no? thinking. Uh, one of the producers mentioned playing the devil, and I thought the devil and death. Oh my. Yeah. Yeah. That'd yeah. be good. I'm just saying, if we make it through a whole season, and Drew has done the VO work, and uh, I haven't, it's it's going to be difficult. It's going to be awkward. It's, it's going to be, be awkward. awkward. Well, we, we we can't let that happen. Let's no, not. It, let's yeah. not. All right. Okay. <laughs> Heather. <laughs> Twenty five. Yep. You just you just shoehorn me into some episode. That's all. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I think you should. Hold I second, think Heather. you should write. I think you should break down the fourth wall as we call it. I didn't train uh-huh. with the nine-year-old twins, but I still know where the fourth <laughs> wall is, all right? And I can show you where the door is. Oh, boy. All right, now just it listen is. to me. We break down the fourth so wall. I so uncomfortable. And you appear as yourself. And I just yeah. say, it's Adam Carolla doing a voiceover, <laughs> and it's and and, uh, and uh, Brian can apologize to the people at home. I promised the guy when I was drunk I would give him some voiceover. We didn't see anything organically yeah. that he could do, but he's actually <laughs> marching through the scene doing a voice, just you doing his own voice. Come like the mission to the audience it's like the monkey in the closet. You'll just kind of show up. And this is really up. uncomfortable. doesn't have anything to do with the story, but uh, here's Adam, everybody. And, uh, thanks. You know, we're just uh, going to... Thanks, Seth. I mean, I mean, Stewie. <laughs> Stewie. Oh, Christ. Well, anyway, let's just keep rolling. Uh, promises were kept. God bless you. I didn't really prepare anything. Then the music starts swelling. <laughs> And I'm out of there. Yeah, and you go right yeah. back to the thing. Jesus, you know. Yeah, we gotta... break down that fourth wall. Yeah, yeah. Heather. Yep. You're 25. Yes. What's up? Um, I guess my questions are: Is uh, you guys were talking earlier about men liking younger women? Uh, there are some women like myself. I can't be with an older man at all. I'm not mm-hmm. attracted to him. It's mm-hmm. a big issue. Yeah, and I want to know, issue? is that normal? <laughs> yucky issue? I, I don't know what you're saying. It, it's well, fine. It, it's, it's no account I think for it's taste. Kinda, it's a, it's, it has to be a whole Drew thing and his psychological analysis because my mom no. dated a lot of older men. You yeah, know, it's, it's interesting. I, I, have, I have a friend that um, whose mother is older than her dad, and she only likes younger men. Mm-hmm. And, really? Yeah, but that's, you know, that's interesting. Whatever. It's what, whatever, Heather, listen, yeah, there's all kinds of reasons. Yeah, that's fascinating, No, but the point is there are reasons that <laughs> people come up with certain sorts of tastes, so to speak, and yours is because of your experience with your mom, whatever. Right. That's fine. Well, you like, yeah. you like younger, like, you're 25. You like 23? I'm 25, yeah. You're like um, 11. What do you like? No, want? 22 to, like, 30, and 30's pushing it. Okay, but you're 25, Ouch. so... Those it, guys aren't younger. It's a great society we're living in where if a 25-year-old dates a 28-year-old, she's dating a younger man, <laughs> look, even look though the, she's older. Look at the, the, well, I kind of uh, have this dilemma now because I, I like this guy who I've known for a while, um, mm. and he's a little bit younger, which is just fine, but he's my best friend. And, mm. yeah, we got intimate, but now he's, like, two states away. And, mm. I don't know, I fantasize about him a lot, and I want to know, that's got to be normal, right? Well, why did is you he? Like your, a guy? You say he's your best friend, but did you like him or did he like you at some um, point? He started it. <laughs> we both like each other, but he initiated it when we got. Um, right, so we're, yeah. we're going. Oh, wait, no, wait, wait, wait. We're going to break it down. Though. So the fact is, she at one time didn't respond to him. That's why they became friends. Finally, he was able to break through in a weak moment, mm-hmm. and she responded and now likes him as well. Mm-hmm. Is yeah, that what we happened? Had, we had two weekends of unbelievable sex. Basically, I, I I know, but him initiating the sex doesn't mean he's the one who likes her. That's the beauty of being a guy. Yeah, you can mm-hmm. actually like True. the person less than they like you, <laughs> and be the one who initiates. 
and finishes the sex, by the way. Strangely. Mm. Yes. But I, more so, often than not. Uh, so, so, and then he moves uh, two states away. Why does he do that if he's in love and he finally has his conquest in his dream? I don't uh-huh. know. I don't think he's in love with me, but he's actually in the Air Force. Uh, I see. Okay. Well, let me just try to get something straight. Who, how, do, how was the friendship started? Who was attracted to who first? We were both attracted to each other. And then why was it a friendship? Why wasn't it a relationship right at the start? Because I still had feelings for my ex, and he still had feelings for his ex, and we did not want to do the rebound thing that most people do. It's rarely that both... Why don't you speak for yourself? Yeah. You weren't willing to yeah. do a rebound thing, and so that's fine. All right. Yeah. So, so, okay, then you guys had amazing sex, and he went off because he's... Uh, Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was here for the summer. Okay. And well, when's he coming back? Uh, December, we think, yeah. All right. So what's the question? Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm really considering pursuing him. Fine. Excellent. Mm. Good. You're, you're, he's wanted you for a long time. You're in. <laughs> I don't know if he's wanted me for a long time. I just no, I bet he, he has. The sex. <laughs> I, 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 it's all good. All right. What's he doing in the Air Force? Um, he's... He, I, I'm not really sure. We talked. Yeah, no, nobody course. knows. Is there, wor- is there a woman alive that knows what their man does? <laughs> He's probably flying a plane of some sort. I would imagine. Yeah, you know, it's you know the thing that's it's always uh, disappointing about the Air Force. Uh, there's one out of every four million enlisted guys in the Air Force actually flies the plane. The right. others are some sort of ground crew backup something, but and it's the never any fun. Amazing fact is that even that guy's girlfriend doesn't know no, what he does. They have no idea. It could be the B two. <laughs> could be the B one. She no. has no oh, idea. Oh, forget about knowing which plane oh. just the fact that they're monkeying with a plane would be uh, enough yeah i don't know what that is i don't know women, women just completely tune out with that stuff but anyway he'll mm-hmm. drop a few bombs he'll be back and then uh, you guys will get going i'm worried uh, that he's not as into it as we think what guy is saying uh look uh, i still have some residual feelings from my last relationship i'd rather just be friends with you at this point that guy's saying that when she shuts him down yeah, but I, 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 I think it's more mutual. Him. I think yeah. it's more him. I, the, the wild sex weekend, any guy can pull that off. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, those were the days. <laughs> Remember those days, Trent? Yeah. Anne. Yes. You're 25. Yes, I am. What's up? All right. Um, first of all, I want to say hi, Seth. I love Family Guy. I love your voice. I think you're awesome. Thank you very much. <laughs> you're welcome. All right. So now I just made myself nervous. Okay. Um, <laughs> just relax. Everything's fine. <laughs> um, well, I got married um, a couple months ago, and then a few weeks ago, I just found out that both of my in-laws have been charged with felonies, mm. and they don't know that I know. But how'd I'm, you find I'm, out? Huh? How'd you find out? I work for a company that does background checks and some of the stuff I can access at home. So my husband was joking, like, we had some friends over and he jokingly said, oh, do a search on my dad. And, and he didn't know they were victims? No, they he were, they didn't were... know either. Mm-mm. What? At the time that, okay, at the time that his dad's, um, what, at the time that he was charged with it, you know, whenever he committed the crime, um, my husband was finishing up high school and he was living with some relatives. He's had a really screwed up. All right, well, there's there's felons, and then there's felons. What do you do? Uh, yeah, do? here's the thing. Well, his mom, it was grand theft, but something about statute of limitations, so it was dropped. His dad's was um, gross sexual imposition and kidnapping. He charged, he or he pled guilty to the gross sexual imposition, and then the kidnapping charge was dropped, so I'm assuming it was a plea bargain. Oh, no, that's what oh, I was Oh, so saying. it was dropped. Yeah, it was dropped. No, it was just gross sexual <laughs> imposition. I, I thought it was mail fraud or something so bad. A- <laughs> This is a hold on a second. First off, it, I never even I didn't even know there was gross sexual imposition, yeah. which it has the word gross and imposition, which sounds like position. It's like uh, you tried to do it like manity style with a fourteen year old. Not in our state. Yeah. Not yeah. in our state. Like, I the, the imagination runs wild. Mm, by yeah. the way, when you hear about the gross sexual imposition, well, I, I, my I and, and kidnapping, I immediately think I hey, picked up a hooker and was a knot or something. You know, something. Well, that, that's the whole thing about the charges. Like sometimes they can sound worse than the crime, or yeah. it could be the other way around. Yes. Yeah, right. I'm just thankful it wasn't anything against children, something like that, you know. And so, uh, well, what 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 do you think the gross sexual imposition and the uh, well, that's, kidnapping that's, was? That's exactly what it was. We didn't know what that would have meant. You know, we we knew what it implied, so we looked it up online to see what the definition of gross sexual imposition is. Mm-hmm. And there's several, you know, what I'm saying there's several different defini- def- definitions. You can either it's either having sex with somebody under the age of 13, Ooh. forcing someone. Oh, oh, okay. So it's not. It's no, not no, there, just a lot of them. It's quiet, quiet, 
quiet, to force quiet, somebody to quiet, have sex with somebody else. Quiet, else quiet, okay. quiet, Sorry. quiet. Oh, Lance State, nine ten. Uh, new record for the show, by the way. Because I was talking. See, that was my fault. No kidding. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> the point. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so, sex with someone who's, you know, 15 is sex with a minor, but yeah. under 13, then it gets into the, the uh, gross part. Okay. All right. So, that's one of them, yeah. All right. Keep going. Give us some other good ones. Okay. Um, another one is forcing so, someone else to have sex with someone else. Ooh. Or dr or basically drugging someone with some form of intoxicant. And That's probably what this was. Yeah, let's go with that one. Yeah. Well, the guys have Either way, names. it's really creepy. Yeah, <laughs> that is creepy. <laughs> and by the way, if I was the son, I would go from the, hey, put my dad's name in it to projectile vomiting that actually filled the room. It's like, uh, it's, uh, you're urinating on a Quaker. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I would just be, I'd be picturing my tan <laughs> straight. Ah, ah. Like, there's no loofah big enough to get me clean. I, I would just be afraid. I, I, I'd How, be my, think uh, about that party, my though. My fingers would be in my ears. I'd be running out of the door. But they were like, they were at a party. Oh, goes, oh let's have a good time. Let's have... Oh, we better go home. We gotta go home. Yeah. Oh, makes me wonder about my dad. But maybe she can look him up tonight. Yeah. Come on. Right. Lesson. I, I look oh, up. All on. I gotta do is find a, a donkey napping, and uh, that's how you know. My, that's what my dad did. I could look him up, but I only have access to Riverside and Ventura in California. Uh, oh, okay. Might have something out there. All right. So, and she's in Ohio. Yes. All right. He. Pro I, I don't care. He probably. No, don't look for Seth, to Seth for help. He probably <laughs> he doesn't look care either. Sounds like you got to do a little sleuthing. He. Uh, so okay, he did one of those things. I. I, I guess the one you. I, well, I don't know. I think the one you, I'm not sure which one you hope for, the two, forcing the two people to have sex <laughs> or the drugging one. The, uh, you know, the having sex with someone under 13. I hope it's not that one, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so what's the question for well, us? The, the whole, okay. What if we and, and what happened to those charges, by the way? He pled guilty to the gross sexual imposition, and the kidnapping charge was dropped, so I'm assuming it was a plea bargain. All you right. see what I'm saying? Like, he agreed yeah. to plead, because he right. originally did plead not guilty. Plea bargain, I mean, the uh, kidnapping, you got to go, you got to go roofie. I'm leaning toward roofie. The whole thing, yeah, it seems like a drugging. And no, the, but I just mean the, the two people to have sex, you got to get two people into the van. Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right, so anyway. So uh, what's, what's I would say whatever the smoothest way to work it into the conversation at Thanksgiving is, that's, <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. All right, so this guy comes from great stock. Yeah, and it's not even his dad. It's his stepdad. So you see what I'm saying? It's just a really oh. messed up situation. All and right. I come from a home where my parents have been married for almost 30 years. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I, don't, I don't know okay. how to deal with this. Okay. Well, that's his step. It's his stepdad. Is that our question? Is your question for us, how to deal with this? Well, my question for you is, basically, it's causing a lot of problems. Like, the first major problem in our marriage, because he's mad at me that I don't want to go around them. But I'm really creeped out, and I told him I just need time, you know, to settle yeah. down. But he's like, oh, you know, I'll tell him to call them about something, and he'll be like, you call and ask them. And I don't even want to talk to them. I'm so just really he, nervous. Like, I'm really, really creeped he, out. He needs you to embrace his felon stepfather? I mean, is that big an the issue way, for him? The way he deals with it is, oh, somebody probably made something up. And, and I try to c explain to him that I have a little bit more faith in our judicial system than that, that they have to have some kind of evidence well, to but, bring it that but far. But here's the bottom line is your, your, your husband has affection for these people. Yeah. They're his parents, and, and, and they, he believes they're rehabilitated in some fashion. Right, he wants yeah, you to kind of relax and, and try to make a family out of this. And maybe, maybe, you ought to, maybe you ought to talk with them. Oh, yeah, no. Not at Thanksgiving. Really maybe maybe Christmas you. morning. Oh, okay, <laughs> how about this? How about, oh, he doesn't want to talk to him. He, no, no he, doesn't want, he doesn't want me to tell anybody. He doesn't know I'm calling the show tonight, but, well, I mean, he doesn't want me to okay. talk to them I or anything. I think the he only way you're going to feel... Oh, then what about when the grandkids come along? Yeah, then it's... That's good. Then, what I'm saying. I don't yeah. want my kids around them unsupervised. That creeps right. me out because I don't know what okay. he did. Uh, listen, well, I, I, I haven't I would... said this in a while, but you got to get a drifter to kill him. <laughs> no, I, I, I mean, it's really... It's the only way it's to, to, to satisfactory... We uh, resolve this thing. I, I, we really do. I, I would think that uh, yes, probably the smartest thing is not to have kids alone with this guy, but still to try to have familial sort of cohesion here. I think you need it's a chance get, to she, get an explanation from the guy Seth's, by yourself. I mean, just talk no, to the guy. That's right. She's, she's going to go over there for Thanksgiving. She's going to have a couple of uh, hot toddies. Oh, Her boy. mouth's going to loosen up, and it's going to get weird. Oh. Super freaky weird. Oh. See, this is why I don't Speaking talk to my parents. And uh, and put don't even, don't put the name in the, the computer. <laughs> wow, gross uh, sexual whatever. All right, Seth McFarland is uh, here tonight. The uh, Family Guy is uh, it's coming out soon.
But we don't have a, a firm date. We, we don't have an exact date. It's it's we're we're thinking either May or March. They haven't really locked in on a date yet. The uh, American Dad is uh, coming out right after the uh, Super Bowl, so that uh, date that that Sunday, that first That's Sunday, sad. is uh, locked in. I'm actually doing a uh, animated show called Drawn Together. Oh yeah, about, yeah. Uh, on the show. I know which, that show, which is uh, supposed to be very good. Mm. Yes, yeah, and that's a Comedy Central show. And Dave, I, I uh, Dave Jesser and Matt Silverstein, dear dear friends, very talented guys. Saw him at your party. Yes, didn't see Seth. Yeah, uh, he was in a cloud of a uh, bong smoke. Yeah, uh, locked yeah. in his bedroom that's, that's... like Howard Hughes. <laughs> Stay in, stay in school, kids. Wearing Kleenex boxes. <laughs> <laughs> for, no, on his head. That was, uh, yeah, that yeah. was, sorry about that if I haven't uh, yeah, that's all right. said that. That's all right. Yet. Listen, I I, uh, I ate my weight in those uh, cocktail weenies. Oh, and terrific. Had a few as long as you had a good time. I had a great time. Yeah. We have a bunch of calls for Seth coming up. All right, we'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Buddy Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L V E 191. Brian Herta and uh, somebody else is uh, coming in here tomorrow night who are from the uh, IndyCar circuit. So uh, we'll uh, talk to them about that. Seth McFarlane, who's uh, quickly becoming uh, like a. He's, he's taking on cult hero status. I know this, uh, I'm not going to be able to get him on the show anymore. <laughs> no, this I'll is I'll always it. make time for you fellas, no, always. He, he made it pretty clear, not through words, but through body language during the at last the party. commercial. No, at the, at the commercial. Oh, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, body. No, I didn't see him at the party. Oh, that's right. Well, there you go. Again, it was yeah. like, hey, even if I was in the same room with him, I wouldn't know. The smoke was so thick. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, it was, a, find any. it was a good one. <laughs> People were getting one. drunk, though, at the party, <laughs> running into a bunch of cartoon nerds. <laughs> it was awesome. I got to, like, hypothetically put in, like, nine sitcoms just from uh, standing <laughs> by Seth's pool for 20 minutes. You, could, you want to ask me how any of them worked out, by the way? But, oh, everyone's a fan. Huge fan. Big fan. That's great. Big fan. Unacceptable. Yeah, great. Uh, Seth is uh, here talking uh, not only about the uh, Family Guy, but uh, American Dad, which is uh, after the Super Bowl on... Uh, didn't the Family Guy open after the Super it Bowl? It did. It did. This is kind of a, kind of a repeat of... Uh, of uh, what happened with Family Guy, you know, it's and, and if we're lucky, we'll have the same uh, same kind of luck. Yeah, but you, you'll sort of do it in such a way where you don't go away. Yeah, well, you <laughs> go away first. Hopefully, there'll be no back. cancellation yeah. during, during right. the. Uh, but yeah, American Dad is um, is a show that uh, I co-created with two uh, two writers, Mike Barker and Matt Weitzman, who have written on Family Guy since day one and uh, are. Um, are now uh, we're we're now we've got this American Dad, which is essentially, essentially Family Guy meets All in the Family. It's a lot more political. It's it's designed for you know the it, it, Bush era. You know what's going to be nice is uh, when they uh, try to cancel American Dad, and you give them the uh, you sure, fellas? Because uh, remember <laughs> remember last time that happened. Uh, you may want to think I won't about even that. flinch Just, this time. No, you. you I, I think it's good because I think if it, I don't care if the ratings are in the tank and you're in the eighth season, they're going to be scared to pull the plug because. Uh, Let's hope. Let's hope. Seth MacFarlane springs back to life like a like a phoenix from the ashes. Drew. The only trouble we could have, you know, it's 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 kind of a kind of a left wing skewing show, which uh, hopefully will. Uh, yeah. So who do you, you know. who who does the show want to get in? Bush or Kerry? Uh, well, you know, we, we kind of figure. If 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 Bush wins, mm -hmm. it I suppose creatively uh, makes the show work a little better on some level. If if Bush loses, uh, the country wins. So <laughs> right. So you you have like a, a bit of a foil. I yeah. mean, it's just it, it's just better. Yeah, uh, it's better comedy. It's better comedy. Yeah. yeah, Meathead from All in the Family. I've just lost all subtlety with that. You know, complain just, about Nixon. Yeah, please don't vote for that man. Please. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, all right. Okay, well, I want to get political, but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I wish it seems like I wish there were better choices all yeah. the way around. I, I would love to uh, be more in love with Carrie, who I would definitely think is a smarter guy than Bush. Although you know, Engineer Chris is uh, quite a bit smarter, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean you're smarter than the President of the United States, so wipe the puss off. But uh, I'm not impressed with Carrie. I wish there was someone who was. I wish there was someone who I just really liked. Like a little more dynamic, who you went? Wow, this guy's sharp, or he's on the ball, or something. Well, that was Howard Dean before he blew it. Yeah, yeah. before he went nuts. Yeah. 
All right, let me say this. Uh, speaking of politics, mm. we forgot about this story last time uh, Seth was in here, or maybe oh, it didn't yeah. happen yeah. yet, that whole 9-11 thing, which I'm sure you're... Uh, Tell uh, story, sp- yeah. ...have spoken about many, many times, but uh, we haven't heard it. Tell us the story. Well, I was uh, I, I missed uh, flight 11, which was the first first flight to hit the World Trade Center by about 10 minutes, and uh, I was in Rhode Island giving a lecture at my old college, and uh, it was a combination of of a number of things. My my travel agent had written, uh, I guess, 8:15, and the flight left at 7:45 in the morning, so that mm. set me back a little bit. Plus, I was right going a little overboard on the scotch the night before. Sure, and, uh, no problem. That <laughs> yeah, I yeah, yeah. Room and, uh, at the party. I can yeah, I can talk. I can, I can, I can, talk. Talk. I can admit it. Yeah, I'll speak. Yeah, and uh, yeah. So you were you were late for the airport. And what what time? So did the flight leave on time? Did it leave the, at seven forty five? I believe left on time, and I got there at about seven thirty. And I got to the desk, and they said, you know, they they just closed the gates. You're too late. And I was so fried and exhausted that I just figured, you know, I'll just sleep and wait for the next one. And, uh, you know, I was asleep, and I heard some commotion in the next room, and I went in, there was a TV on, and, and the first plane had hit, and they announced the... Where were you sleeping? Were you in the, the airport? I, I, was in, I was in the lounge. Just sleeping in the lounge? Yeah. And no one walked by and went, hey, that's Stewie? <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not at the time. Okay. No, no, All right, I no. would have done that. All right, so you just now, sleeping uh, in the lounge, and, and now were you, uh, were you arguing with the person? I mean, like, I, I throw fits at the... I demand to be let on this plane. I, you know? I, I didn't, and I, and I you know... Uh, I've only done that a couple times. I'm, I'm kind of non-confrontational. Like I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm usually, right. You know, usually relaxed enough to find whatever. I'll take the next flight. But it's uh, no. I just, you know, I just kind of said, fine. I'll take the eleven o'clock and, so, and just so you, waited. You woke up and you went in to watch this TV. Did you realize that was the flight? No, no, not not until about fifteen minutes later, and they they announced the flight, and I turned the guy next to me. I said, my God, that that was the flight I was supposed to be on. How did that and, feel? Uh, it, it was surreal? it was it was surreal and 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 you know this this sounds horrible but I mean it, it was relief you know at, at yeah. first and which is you know yeah but well, no, you um, gotta, I mean but that, that was there that elation like yeah, I gotta call my family and tell them I love them kind of thing it's like well yeah you know it was interesting because I called I called my my parents and I called uh, I, I I had left my assistant at the time a message before I got on the plane saying I'm not. Uh, I missed the the uh, first flight. I'm taking the later one, which they didn't get. I guess until after the fact, oh, wow. uh, about 20 minutes later. So it was about a half hour or so that they, because they had my flight information at the office, oh, and my they God. thought I was on the plane. And uh, you know, so so it was. Uh, you know, I ended up just driving back across country and uh, well, and dr- driving driving from Rhode Island from or, Rhode Island or, or, or to. From- to, or from Boston, from well, from from uh, from Rhode Island, and, and dri- driving to California. Yeah, with with two friends of mine that that were also uh, were also stuck in the area. Oh, wow. wow, yeah, it must have just been a uh, surreal, yeah, uh, yeah, crossing of the nation. In the, There's in, in the shadow of everything that had happened. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it was it it was it was pretty crazy. I mean, it, it, it was uh, you know it it didn't really in a lot of ways it it really hasn't sunk in you know I, I never really had that moment where i kind of freaked out and and uh you know where it just hit me and i you know who knows maybe does it somewhere have down to the line. what do you mean yeah that's a good question and that's I a mean, good question well please don't do it tonight by the way i mean you've made no, all no, this no, way. no you just, don't you don't, don't have, have to, to get weird in here because there's no experience of brushing with death with this right yeah you, that's no, i guess that's it isn't it yeah it's, it's just it's just a, a factoid you know yeah it's, it, it, yeah in, in a way it's sort of like your mom telling you she almost lost you right. on the second yeah. trimester or exactly. something it's like you know what are you gonna do it's amazing it's a great story but you don't experience it the way you would have seen it right from a cliff or something right yeah, right. you need to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Take a rock. I really need yeah. to have the bungee cord break or do something that really do I mean, something to really get a sense of it. Put de- me in the moment. This was a decent try, but this is more hypothetical yeah. than yeah. it really was. It, it, I don't even like to take the freeway. Staring Adam. death in yeah. the face. And speaking of death, yeah. Just close your eyes and listen to <laughs> oh, the here voice. Here we go. Here the we go. That's death. a that's a wonderful segue. The Grim Reaper. Yeah. How could you forget? Come on, buddy. <laughs> Surely's got to be uh, room hear, for the hooded man in a sickle. I hear Norm Oh no! Wait a minute. No. Please. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, no, we, we're we're uh, 
he's 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 a we're, we're 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 very happy with Adam. <clears throat> yeah, we're very happy with our because I'm death. easy. I'm easy. Yes. Look, let's yes. face it. I'm not. Yes. I'm not as talented as uh, McDonald, but I'm oh, easy. St- I show up on time. I do my thing. <laughs> let's take a set call. Come on, here we go. I just, uh, I, I'm, I'm not over the uh, Flight 11 I know. thing. It's, just, it's incredible. It makes, you, it makes you philosophical is what it makes you. It's like, hey, it's just not your, you know. I know. It's, 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 almost, it's fortunate that I, that I am not the least bit religious because I probably, you know, it probably would have become a monk or something. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't be able to write comedy anymore. Right. But. right. Hey, guys. Wow. Yeah. Was he the only one that missed the flight? I, I, th- I think there were, I remember reading about a few others that, that had also missed the flight, but I don't. Because if you're the only one, then you'd be like the chosen one. <laughs> yeah. Say, Anderson, it, it, ask that question again when you're not high. Yeah, I, don't, I don't smoke weed. I'm not high. All right. Well, mushrooms. Whatever Whatever you're on on this uh, particular Tuesday. All right. Let's, uh, you know, let's... Anderson is Brian, by the way. Yeah, he yeah, is. He really is like Brian. I mean, what do you mean, Anderson? He, he, Stocky, he's, he's antisocial, but lovable. And, and an alcoholic. I lovable lush. Drinks. Yeah, great. All right. Let's uh, take a uh, quick question for uh, Seth. Clint? Hey, what's up? Hey, Clint. Seth, i got to say it's a pleasure to be able to talk to you. Uh, big fan since day one, and just want to say when I found out that Family Guy was coming back on, I nearly uh, crapped my pants. So my question for you is uh, That's on, the, great. <laughs> on the DVDs, uh, the special... Uh, the special effects on them where it uh, says that you know, shows you doing the double voices like you know Brian and uh, I think Peter at the same time. I just want to know what's your favorite voice to do and your favorite character and why? Uh, well, probably the easiest one is uh, Quagmire. The easiest one? Yeah, yeah, because there's really not I mean, it's not like the character like Brian there's, there's you know, I, I, guess, I guess there's a little more acting involved, but uh, Quagmire is just, it's 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 kind of a breeze because he's kind of one note. He's he's just the sex guy, and <laughs> it's uh, oh yeah. You know, there's not really a whole lot of um, do a little giggity 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 giggity, giggity goo. <laughs> yeah. There you go. It's it's uh, there's, there's just there's no uh, there's no intense Stanislavski in preparation that goes into Quagmire, unlike so, the others. So on the DVD, <laughs> they see you doing the voices uh, in real time. Mm-hmm. I yeah, mean, there's. I think there's some video footage on there. There's, there's. You mean uh, like Stewie can be talking to Brian, and you will you record that in real time? When when we do our table reads, when we read the script for the network, I, I have to jump back and forth from voice to voice because we, you know, we do it in real time. But when I record, I generally, you know, we'll do a few takes of Stewie, then a few takes of Brian. It, it's it's easier to do it that right. way. One of right. the greatest Brian Stewie exchanges when they get high. <laughs> Remember, yeah, it's, yeah. When they're in the uh, Amsterdam uh, yes. pot bar, I I love the Fantastic Voyage I, episode. Yes, that, yes. where oh. uh, Stewie uh, goes in uh, into the the sack to try to yes. destroy the killer sperm. Yes, As a lot of CGI in that episode. Lot yeah, of, uh, but yeah, if, if you if you episode. grew up when we did, that is transforming. You know, it's like <laughs> yes, uh, horse. Drawn uh, buggies and uh, <laughs> gas lights. It was yeah, a different yeah, yeah. era. All I right, never, so now, never saw that on Bullwinkle. I'm sorry, Seth, but now you, you have to do a little back-to-back. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you just do. It's bad radio otherwise. I could get fired. No, I forgot. I mean, you know, I'll try and switch midline. All right. I tell you, Adam, what am I? Some kind of barking seal? There you go. <laughs> Peter to Stewie right there. Wow. Mid-syllable. All right, we're going to take a little break. Seth McFarlane is uh, in studio tonight. Seth Green has worked nonstop since he began in the business. I'm, I made Seth Green read his bio. <laughs> as, as Chris. As Chris. That's it's, great. It's precious. It really it really is. It's big, God bless the man. The guy got started when he was a zygote, so it took him like uh, three hours to just get to the teenage years. He was in Radio Days, one of my yes. favorite movies, and I can't really enjoy it anymore because now all I can see is, is yeah. Seth Green. Yeah, he was a young Woody Allen in oh, Radio is Days. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, one of yeah. the uh, more uh, underrated, or I shouldn't say underrated, but sort of uh, cast aside uh, Woody Allen. Oh, yeah. Is that yeah. when rose up under the roller coaster? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Coney Island. Yeah. We'll take a uh, quick break. We'll be right back after this. Hey, everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-L-O-V-E-191. Seth McFarlane in the studio tonight. A lot of guys. No chicks, but a lot of guys waiting out front for uh, <laughs> Seth's autograph. That's, the, that's, the, uh, that, that, that's animation for you. He's yeah. Yeah. Well, that's okay. I'm sure, you know, 
high school is a nice uh, farm lake for that. Mm. And mm. Uh, steps right into animation. Because you're way too talented to have gotten laid in high school. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, you're, you're, you're right on the you money. You still may be You're a right on the money. You're that talented. You're right. <laughs> well, a little bitterness. My, 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 high, my high school, uh, yeah, there, there, there was nothing going on. You there. are and you know so it, right. Eric. Now it is, uh, and now it's payback time. Petrified right? Forest. It is payback time. Yeah, he finishes in the hair, he told me. Yeah, it, 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 really is much, the it really is much easier now. <laughs> oh, my God, yes. They're like, you just oh. drop the Stewie voice and pow, underpants just back in the hair. come flying off. Oh, Snap! Who wants some of what I've got to offer, ladies? <laughs> That's right. And 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 there, there we go. That's, there it is. Uh. Yeah. Oh yeah. And and let me tell you something. Uh, you can always give one of these uh, ladies a little, throw them a little uh, voiceover bone. You know what I mean? Oh. No problem. <laughs> I mean, you, can, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you you can put anyone <laughs> and you then want. Cut it out. Then drop it. Yeah. Yeah. Not use it. You can put them in. Not the guy who's been championing the show. That, for I, four I don't know years. that that has yeah. the same effect. I mean, it's not like yeah. you know. Honey, you want to be in the cartoon pictures? <laughs> yeah. I can get you there. No, it's, it's not, yeah. not the same. Yeah. And probably half the, the chicks in this town think the dog is actually employed. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Yes, I absolutely. think there's a good mm, chance of that. Mm, if you're hot yes. and you're 21 and you're in this town, yeah. you think Stewie's Stewie. Oh, yeah. And Brian's. Yeah. Brian. Right. All right. Thinks. Let's, uh, let's take a uh, little talk to uh, Nikki over here. Is 25. Uh -oh. Nikki? What's up? Do, did we talk to no! you before? <laughs> I'm like, no, put me back on hold. What's up? It says here you're an escort. Yes. Mm-hmm. And they also told us during the break to get to Nikki because she has to go to work. <laughs> oh, yeah. my God. You guys are bad. That's the That's an admirable job ethic you've got. Yeah. Do what? All right. Let's, listen, Scatterbrain. What's up? What's your question? My question is, why is it that you guys, well, I wouldn't say you guys, but a lot of the callers stereotype. You know, if a guy gets laid by, like, 50 girls, he's all that in a bag of Doritos. But yet, if a girl sleeps with one or two guys, she's a big, fat whore. A stinking whore. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know. No, it's not, it's it's not, not that one way. or two guys, by the way. Yeah. And you, you're you're taking money for sex. That's, right. that's different, different, right? Different thing. Right. It's a very why different Why not, thing. right? Well, there, there, there are reasons why you shouldn't do that. It's well, illegal. Yeah, but it's illegal. Well, let's forget about the law. It's just work work on uh, how it affects the, the you. human part. Yeah, it, it, it's a, it's not a it's it takes the human interaction completely out of the equation. Right. Well, what do you, what do you do? So you're an escort. Right. How much for uh, intercourse, by the way? It's two hundred and tips. Two hundred. That's, that's a good deal. Two hundred and plus and uh, plus you give a tip. What what kind of tip? Fifteen twenty percent. And on uh, parties larger than six, do you actually just add a fifteen percent gratuity? No, 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 no. no. I don't my my uncle Jerry can get you the same vagina for one fifty. Uh, not the right. same. Right? No. Not the None same. They only make the money on the tips because you know yeah. the, the guy owns the shop. Right? <laughs> All right. So, and and what about oral sex? Um, I always cover it up. No, but how much? It's it's part of the deal. Oh, oh, yeah. But what if I just want oral? It's it's same thing. And you have some sort of 69 discount. <laughs> it, it seems like you would, like the low self-esteem special. <laughs> yeah. No. Bury your face where a guy Free just tickets was. tickets to Six Flags. Yeah, this, it should be something. Well, That's Nikki, why I love yeah. that show, Hookers on the Brink, Drew. To hear the, uh, the haggling? I, I just, uh, it's the uh, black guy in the uh, dented up SUV. And he's a chick gets in a car. You ever see that show? I think mm -hmm. it's on no, HBO no. or Showtime. I think it's HBO. It, it's just awesome because I, I swear they hooker. They just have the hookers mic'd up, so the camera's like way in the back of the car, so the guys are uh, anonymous. But it's like, chick comes in, it's like, yeah, you fine, baby. How much for uh, BJ? And she's like, twelve dollars. And she's, woo, baby. I ain't one of the Rockefellers. <laughs> <laughs> you got to do me better than that. So, and I'm always I'm yeah, yelling at the great. TV set, like, oh, come on, really, <laughs> F fifteen bucks for intercourse, a twenty for anal. <laughs> You're 22, you get to have anal and kill her, mm. and uh, you, you're haggling. That's, that's, you, you give that to the guy who drop, drops you off at the airport, right? If this were 1876. Yeah, right. All right, now so, where, the, no, where, no, two, where was she? Two. Okay. Nikki. Yeah. How, Nikki, how many guys are, we, would you be with on a, let's say, good week? A good week? Um, probably 15. Fifteen. And there's a couple things, Nikki. That that people that engage in the jobs that you engage that you 
three grand. pursue yeah. essentially always have a trauma history. And mm. so and people kind of know that and sense that. The other thing is you, you, you made an issue about the double standard. It turns out the double standard of, for, for men and women, not, not sustained by men. Men make no to the double standard, and then they're over it immediately. They'll go out with you. They'll whatever. Yeah. The women perpetuate double standards. Ooh. It's when you right. when it's actually studies other women that go to men and say, "Don't date her. She's a hoe. You can't. You can't. You can't see her." Yeah. See, because, but I don't yeah. know. How many of my friends, I've jokingly been like, "Okay, so would you do a blowjob for for like five grand?" And yeah. all of them would step up to it. They would for five grand. Yeah. yeah. Or or even a thousand bucks. Yeah, but you, you you hang out with people that are, you know, addicted to a methamphetamine and, uh, you know. No, no, no. That's in. And, and all that. It, it, you're not doing it for, you're doing it for 200. <clears throat> okay. What? Okay, well, listen, yeah, you're, you're giving quite a considerable discount. And you're doing it regularly. Okay, so right. what, what, are you just calling to try to make yourself feel better or what's up? No, that's not it at all. I like my job. I wouldn't do it if I didn't like it. All right, but listen, okay, let, let me tell you something about, about this. Hooker's talking about what's wrong. You know, you pay a guy at the car wash, he, he gets down on his knees and scrubs your white walls. Why isn't that price? It's the same, it's the same vibe, it's the same uh, loud mouth crap I get from fat chicks trying to explain to me how hot they are. Mm. Oh, I'm sexy. I'm a ton of fun. More cushion for you. Yeah, okay, I'm going to vomit. Get the hell out of here. And please take the ski pants off. I put something over them. Put, listen, uh, put a tablecloth over every, yourself. Every, no one's happier than my heroin addicts when the heroin's working for them. Right, I'm it's just like, saying, hey, they wouldn't do hair if it didn't work for them. All yeah, I'm right. saying is, is you can have all the rap you want about sleeping with 30 guys a week and how you're proud and it's fine and you're good with it. First off, if you were fine with it, you wouldn't be calling the show trying to convince us you're fine with it. It will, it will, it will be not fine someday, and that day will come. It's like any other form of addiction or compulsion you'll see. All right, Seth MacFarlane uh, in studio tonight. We'll take a uh, quick break. Be right back. Buddy, it's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Seth McFarlane is in the studio tonight. Seth, uh, of course, you know from the Family Guy and is really um, taking on. I, you know, let me just say this about uh, Seth. Here's what you want in this business, Drew. Huh. You, want, I'm, 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 you, you want respect. Seth has that. And you want to, you want to be recognized, but by the right people, mm. not, not bugged mm -hmm. at the supermarket. But uh, have people take your phone calls and things like that when you're uh, putting them in. You know what I mean? Yeah. Seth has a very nice balance, uh, very uh, very hip. People people who know or are in the know uh, know him, and uh, he can... Uh, do his shopping in relative uh, anonymity. Yeah, you know it's 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 the it's my favorite medium for that reason. Is uh, you know I, I I will be in a bar or a restaurant, and and this happened many times where I'll overhear someone talking about the show, which is much more rewarding than getting approached. Yeah. 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 yeah, that is nice. And before we were on, I can remember seeing in bars, and we were just on the radio, and having <laughs> people go, "Love line sucks," <laughs> and I'd go, "Yeah, yeah," and I join in with them. And with a with a with a mousy voice, though, so they wouldn't recognize it. Through, but yeah, so and it, does anyone ever recognize your voice as your voice? Because you don't really do your voice. Well, Brian, yeah, Brian no, that's is, that that's never Brian's happened. A I mean, bit. Brian's your voice, right? Yeah, yeah. Essentially, I mean, it, I, I I've I've been recognized for you know maybe like once every few weeks or so these days, somebody will recognize my face. But again, fortunately, with this medium, it's right. You know. No one sees you, so it's it's you kind of. Do you like that? I mean, would I, you, do, I do, I do. I have no desire to be, uh, you know, right. Get laid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no desire at all like, without having to do the stupid voice. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I think I think the uh, I think the price would be too high. I I, I, I can't. I, uh, I, yeah. I would I would be. That's what Drew thought. That's why to death. five years ago he got out of TV. <laughs> Back to radio. Or much better. Yeah. Much better. Yeah. Drew. Then it's Keep the guy it. at McDonald's recognizes it. Keeping it mm -hmm. real. Yeah. And then you don't have to walk around all day and go, hey, man, show. Where's, what about me? I got two partners. Right, where's Jimmy? Where's the, where's the doctor? <laughs> it says, where's the, here's where I go, all day. Where the doc, where's the doctor? Where are the juggies? That's, uh, that's, that's why I, all day. Where's the, eh, everyone. My wife will do that. I'll get out of the morning. I'll get out of the shower. Hey, man, show. Me. Where are the juggies? <laughs> uh -huh. Baby, I wish I knew. Aaron? She's a fan. Yeah. She's a fan. <laughs> yeah. Aaron, you're 21. Yes. You got a question for Seth? Oh, my gosh. I didn't realize I was on. Hi, Seth. Um, actually, Hi, Aaron. I was, I was wondering if you're married. <laughs> I, I am not married, no. He's but, married despite what it says on my uh, internet bio, no, I'm not, I'm not married. He's well, married, married to his me? work. 
What's that? Will you marry me? <laughs> Not now. Yeah, I'm 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 a pretty uh, pretty far off from that uh, at the moment. I'm afraid. Yeah, okay, but, well, but uh, I love you. I I I'm serious. I love you. Well, that I makes two of us, Aaron. Um, hold on one second. Let me just explain something. Poor Aaron is is listen. Just quiet down. Drew. Declaring her love for this. Man. I understand, but but let the girl talk for God's sake. Pe- people do. They go. Oh, you don't understand. I love you. That, that that's not going to make Seth. Uh, it's funny because we were just talking about you. this kind of thing. And let me let me explain something. The, that window has uh, closed and been painted shut. You should have got to Seth right after he got uh, canned off of Fox. No, high school or, originally. High school. Oh, high school. Done deal. <laughs> yeah, done deal. I really hope everybody who kicked my ass in high school heard what you just said. Yeah, no, that it's, That'd it's be just awesome. It's payback time. Yeah, it's flogging time. <laughs> and not not with the hand, but, it, it, but is that interesting? Do you, do you hear, hear what you. I'm saying? I hear you. Not with the hand, but this, this but is the, flogging. This is with with the cat of nine tails. This is that interesting thinking where if people, you know, you you don't understand. I love you, therefore, right. you must love me back, right? Which right. is a uh, funny thinking people have. Aaron, why do you? Let me let me uh, first off see if you're uh, suitable <laughs> for Seth. <laughs> why uh, why do you love Seth so much? Because he is the funniest man on earth. Mm-hmm. He is so mm-hmm. funny, and I yeah. don't just love him because he does Family Guy. He's okay, what what's your favorite Family Guy episode? Uh, too sexy for a fat. Okay, all right, good one. She's a fan. Yep. Which, one, which yep. one is that? With? I, I, That's uh, where Peter gets liposuction. <laughs> yeah, I've seen yeah. that one. Yeah. That is the, I mean, the entire episode, every minute. There's another joke. Like I, I love Family Guy. I watch it really every day because. There's nothing on TV, so we You're have... You're doing your homework, I hope. There's nothing I on am. TV. I do my homework. All right, homework. good. <laughs> All right. Are you attractive, Aaron? I think I am. Uh-oh. I'm, I have, um, I'm like, you five got. three. I have blonde hair, blue eyes, about mm-hmm. 110. Mm, petite. All right. Do I love you because you're Stewie's voice? Oh, yeah, yeah. All That's, right, Aaron. uh... Wait a minute, let me place for. that. That's uh, Rogers and Hammerstein, uh, Cinderella, that's, 1952, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's why there you're you late go. in high school, everybody. <laughs> that's what attracts the ladies right there. <laughs> another Extensive uh, knowledge of old-time showbiz. Another question for uh, Seth. Let's see. Oh, there it is. Capri? Yes. You're 19? Yes, I am. What's up? Hello, Seth. Hi, Capri. Oh, my God. Okay, I'm so happy I got through. First of all, I just have to say that I love your work, and I think you are just extremely talented and Thank also you. very sexy. I just have to add that. <laughs> oh, come on. Uh, honestly, honestly. What's happening just, just here? Just note the difference between men and women here. Just, just, just take it in. <laughs> just sexy? <laughs> yeah, but, but really, this is... She, 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 have, you, have you ever seen uh, Seth? Yes, I have many okay, different right. photos. Oh, right, good. Hold on a second. Oh, what the hell? <laughs> so so, no, because sometimes I don't mean that against Seth. Because have sometimes you ever was seen I was Seth? I wearing was I, I mean. wearing my glasses or not? Because sometimes the women will say that based on just hearing things, right, and watching right, your work right. and stuff like that. So that's no, why she knows so. he's sexy. All right, that's fine. That's All right. He's t- Seth is just doing wonders for my ego being just, here tonight, really. really. Right, just just, just magnificent. Have you seen Seth? Seth shut up. <laughs> <laughs> if he got in that plane, he'd look better. <laughs> oh, please, Drew. Who said that? That is not <laughs> Oh, that's what you meant. That's yes, what you that, meant. Yes, that's it. That's what I meant. No, Seth is Girls, hot. girls, you're both pretty. Seth is hot in a... I'll tell you what makes Seth hot. He's a dude... And chicks don't care that much. That's uh, number one. <laughs> How, How dare care? you? How no, dare you? He's rich and he's not fat. And he's funny. It's really and all it takes. that's what makes Seth hot. All right. And there's some. There's a sort of boyish charm to him. He's cute. i got to say that. He's Capri? Boring. Bless you all. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. So you're into Seth. Yes, very much. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I also have a question. Um, I heard about the, the live action shows that you did in Canada. Yes. And I was just wondering what? if you have planned any yet to do in the states. A little burlesque show we did up there. Oh my God! No, it was a. Uh, it was uh, actually ice, like ice capades. <laughs> Brian and Stewie. And it that. was a live, uh, actually a live on stage reading that we all did of a Family Guy episode. Really? And uh, yeah, it was it was at the uh, Montreal Comedy Festival. Oh, I see. And it's great. It was the first time we've done any, done anything like that, and it was uh, just great to kind of. Get a first-hand response, you know, just reading through a script, was and it we a, a script that you eventually put on film, or it, it was it was one uh, it was the Weinstein episode, which oh, was yeah. the uh, when you wish upon a Weinstein, yeah, yeah, which was the unaired uh, episode. But we we'd love to do that again. I mean, we we uh, you know they they're they're talking about maybe doing something down here in the states, but uh, you know it's just a matter of scheduling because we're all 
so busy. I think but, you get the big HR puff and stuff characters. Yeah, big, yeah. You know, huge stewy yeah, you get, heads. You get well, there, there, there has been discussion of a of a Broadway musical. Believe it or not, oh, really. We've been approached, and I, oh, I my God. we're trying to figure out how you do that. The, the King and I. Yeah, yeah. Well, well alien. Well, how, 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 how you do? How do you Stewie, it? How you do, Brian? You know, how do you? Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Disney managed to figure yeah, that Disney out. Disney does kind well, of the, figure that yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Like, will the big uh, birthday costumes do it? You know, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah Stewie might. <gasps> but be, we'll uh, try. Damn it, tough. I'll tell you that, that midget's going to lose ten pounds if I sweat <laughs> in the first act. Believe you me. Uh, yeah, we 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 would like to do it down here, and and we may we may in fact uh, do it at some point. So it's it's essentially uh, like a live table read. Basically, yeah. I mean, this this was this was a, a you know we we did a live reading of the show. We showed the uh, presentation for American Dad. We did a song from the album. So it's just kind of a little mini variety show that we uh, we did up there. And it seemed to seem to go over pretty well. So this was uh, last year. This this was uh, this few, year, few months last, ago. Yeah. Last one they had. Yep. All right. Let's. Uh... Let's see. She's an actress. Tries to date Line six. Actors. Line six. Line six. All right. Candace. Yes. Twenty one. Yeah. What's up, baby doll? Huh? What's going on? Hello. Hello. Oh, uh, there we go. All right. What's going on? Um, my problem is when uh I have like rigorous sex with my boyfriend, my inner like uh, vaginal lips, like the left one only, will swell. Mm-hmm. Really good. Vaginal stroke. <gasps> well, no, this is a future viewer of uh, American yeah. Dad. It's she. <laughs> yeah, she's a left, left, leftist. That's how you can tell. Mm, she's mm. a leftist. That's, that's a good sign. Uh, Candace, here's the deal. First of all, does that surprise you that when you uh, sort of get pounded on like a cutlet yes, for four when you hours, work on a part happens? of your body, it gets irritated. That that's just the way it goes. But right? why why the uh, asymmetry and the irritation? It, it may have just to do with her anatomy or his number one or his? number two. His maybe curves in some way mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then the, he does. Yeah. He curves. Does he curve toward the side of you that's swelling? Um, he curved the other way, probably. No, he like it, it's kind of odd to say. It's somewhat like a banana, like upward. A oh, upward. Yeah. All right. but, that but means he's in love, a... by the way. Huh? All right. <laughs> it's just not, no, look. Does anyone have a sense of humor calling this show? <laughs> Are you kidding? Okay, go yeah. ahead, Drew. But Candace, yeah. So obviously, you know, your anatomy can predispose to this sort of thing. You might want to have a doctor look at that swollen lip when it's swollen, just to make sure it's not oh. a herpetic outbreak, something uh. like that, because that can happen. Herpes will recur in the same place and recur at the site of irritation. But how how long does it stay uh, swollen? Good question, Candace. How long is it swollen for after the vigorous sex? It it depends. If it doesn't swell bad, it can go down in a few hours. I've had it stay for a whole day. All right, then that's just irritation. That's just Take right. it easy. All right. Okay. Use well, some lube and uh, slow it down a little. Oh, I'm sorry. That's the only way I can orgasm is from, like, pretty, like, not rough, but just, like... Prolonged? Huh? Okay. Well, good times. Then. I, I don't know. Just get, a, get a thesaurus and call back in 20 years. <laughs> I, I can't talk to her. She's uh, she's watching something or talking to I someone. She's asleep, I think. We... I I think she's actually uh, bringing a uh, like an F fourteen down onto the deck of a carrier <laughs> at night in rough seas. Like that's she's most got the of orange people... the orange glow sticks she, there. Yeah, yeah. semi four. Yeah, yeah. She's uh, telling them about well, some bank and uh, that's it's an important a... job. Yeah, <laughs> she was on hold for ninety one mm -hmm. minutes. I give her a break, but yeah. look here's here's the thing. Uh, you've made it through. You got you want to hear the answer, right? Yeah. Okay. All right, let's uh, take a question for Seth. Sarah? Yeah. You're 22. What's up? Um, I've got two questions for Seth, actually. One is, um, can he please describe Lois and Peter's sex life behind the scenes? <laughs> You know, it's it's they, Peter and Lois have a pretty good uh, sex life. We, we've established there's yeah. there's you know occasional uh, down uh, dead spots where we we we. Well, Lois, the, is, Lois is kind of hot. She is. She is. Yeah. He's, he's, and, and what he, she he sees did pretty Peter well is for always, himself. Always mysterious, but she <laughs> seems to be into it. Yeah, they're yeah. they're they're um, we, we've we've kept them pretty active actually because it's it's uh, you know there 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 are so many shows where you know you get the. Hus husband and wife, show. you know, hate you know, are not attracted to each other, and they, you know, it's, right. we we, we kind of think it's it's it it works for the two of them. It's kind of nice that they both are, you know, it's kind of easier for him than for her, I would imagine. But uh, <laughs> right, yeah, 
There's yeah, a, I thought the last question was a, a nice segue for the safety word is banana episode. Yeah, <laughs> that's a perfect example. Yeah. They're not afraid um, to try new things. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything that the uh, Loveline listeners can learn from their sex life? <laughs> Oh, God. Well, Sarah's going with this theme. She's yeah, like, all the way. <laughs> Seth, you don't have to dignify that with an answer, mm, by the mm. way. It's a bizarre hypothetical questions about uh, cartoons and <laughs> lives yeah, outside, uh, outside of the episodes that actually just Just, just vi vi visualize the, uh, the, the pale-skinned uh, uh, men drawing the, uh, drawing the sexual pictures in uh, mm. enclosed rooms with fluorescent lighting. That, that uh, <laughs> maybe. Puts a new perspective. They're very on it. careful to maintain the boundaries in their house. Mm. Though. Yes, yeah, they never do anything in front of Stewie. Mm. And that was. You know. they, they, he's. I think he may have walked in on something uh, before. And he gets disgusted though. Yes. Yeah. Jessica. Yeah. You're 21. Yes, I am. What's up? Um, I have a question for Dr. Drew. Um, my boyfriend and I have tried to have sex a few times, and it just doesn't really seem to be working because I'm small. And, like, I'm not really a small person, but I don't really know what the problem is because I've had sex before, and, like, I mean, I've had problems having it with guys that are, like, bigger, but, like, I don't really know are you, exactly. Are you nervous but. about this guy for some reason? No, like, I don't know. It's it's happened with other guys, too, and I don't. So you just, you're just, that part of your anatomy small? Yeah. Like I don't it, think that it's small. I think that it kind of closes down. It, really? It has like, it can be I'm small. I'm nervous, but I mean, it's worked with like guys before. And right. So sometimes it seems like it's not small, right? Yeah, exactly. Right, because other times it's sort of clamping no. down. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a, well, yeah. Have, have you tried hanging from a chin up bar? No, no, I actually haven't. <laughs> you got to do that. Zero gravity chair? Mm. Like one of those hey, swings, uh, or so, so wait a minute. So Jessica, you're saying your uh, your part is small down there, but now you're saying that you have sex with other guys in the past, and it didn't seem and, small. And she even said well, with guys with larger penises, and it didn't yeah. seem small. Really? It's obviously, been smaller. Like with him, it like it just has not worked at all. Like I mean, barely. Oh, uh, we have to cut cut the uh, pot supply coming in from Mexico <laughs> into this country. The people are now at the point. He, you know, it just cannot form thoughts anymore. Forget about sentences. Yeah. All right, so uh, we're trying to figure out. Now, here's the problem, Drew. Here's your problem. Yeah. You uh, pick I a fill, direction and you go with, with it, yeah. and you'll just make it work. Some yeah, of the reasons is to avoid the frustration of dealing with the... All right, but let, let Vanna flip over the right, letters go before ahead. you start guessing the puzzle. <laughs> Jessica. Yeah. Do you or do you not have a small vagina in your estimation? In my estimation, I believe I do, like abnormally small. Okay, so that would, my that, question that would then, be yes. No. Why, with some guys, does it not seem to be small? Well, obviously, they're, well, I don't know. I mean, he's like eight inches, and that's bigger than like any guy that I've been with, so. So, so it's, uh, yeah, it's like, look, a size 8 shoe is not small until a size 14 foot tries to go into it. But right. if a size 6 tries to go into it, it's not. So there's an, an, an anatomical, why don't you just say he's too big for me? Well, but, like, I mean, I've been with guys, they're not, like, tiny, and it just, like, takes a little tweaking, and then it will work, but, like... So this is what she said before. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> tweaking. <laughs> yeah. It falls apart in Act 3, but, uh... <laughs> Yeah, you just. You get but that. it's this not was, impossible because those parts are supposed to fit together, you know, like. Yeah, there are people that don't fit together, though, Jessica. Some people just don't fit together, and we actually get more complaints about size disproportion than yeah. where the guy's too big than where the guy's too small. That's more of a problem, more of a deal breaker. I have that problem. I've had that problem with ladies. Yeah, and the deal is if you can relax. That's you why. That's when then then I hear the uh, are you in. Yeah. And that's uh, that's yeah. when it's time to swallow the bottle of sleeping pill. <laughs> are you in? And you're finished. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, are you done? Okay. So, uh, all right. So Jessica has a small vagina compared to this guy's novelty sized door. <laughs> exactly. But compared to a normal this is, this size, is, this, is, penis, this problem is very Sesame Street. Yeah. It, it really yes. is. Yes. It it, re it really is. I you try to think of one of the Sesame Street songs that applies <laughs> to this. <laughs> Jessica, you you can't do the vaginal math. Um, the what? All right. Oh, look, he's big, so it seems small. Get yourself a protractor. 
Some right. of these things are bigger than <laughs> others. Some of these things are right. <laughs> oh, oh, we apologize. And then the Indian head just comes up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right. She's uh, she's she's small. He's big. Fantastic. All right. What is that? What is that Indian head? And what I does it have to do with? What are all the patterns? What does it have to do with television? I don't know. <laughs> Why? I I don't know. I and you know, I, there was a time, by the way. See now, you kids don't remember. <laughs> yeah, you just made a reference that nobody under. I know. You kids don't remember <laughs> when stations would sign off. The the, the, the four stations. That broadcast would sign off at two A, and and by the way, never more depressed than actually watching it sign off. Yeah, and, and they do so by showing you fighter jets going across the sky, an American flag, star spangled banner. And I reached yeah. out and touched the face of God. <laughs> <laughs> you're like stoned, and it's three thirty in the morning. You're like, I gotta kill myself. Yeah, isn't there a Marx Brothers film on somewhere? There's gotta be something on. <laughs> Maybe I'll just stare at a pack of matches and move. <laughs> Yeah, you just you'd be so depressed, <laughs> and uh, it's like yeah, it, it it's a horrible realization when TV is ready to go to bed and you're not. <laughs> yeah, and and it's like you want company. Yeah, that's basically it. Well, Company's leaving. Here's the thing, everybody. Things used to stop at a certain time. Like Seven Eleven was open from seven until eleven. 11. And if you wanted a six or a Mickey's at one a.m., you weren't getting it unless uh, you thought to buy it before eleven. And things closed on Sundays. And Indian heads popped up at the two a.m. And guys touched the face of God. It was a strange black and white pattern. It, it was with a, an Indian in profile with a huge feather dress on. You know what it was? It, it, in life, there used to be the equivalent to the guy flicking the lights on and off at the uh, bar going, all right, yeah. last call. <laughs> Let's uh, pack it in and, and take and it out of here. Boop, why, why that? That was to get you to, to shut the TV <laughs> and go to bed. That was to wa- I think yeah. that was to wake you up. <laughs> right, to get you to the, 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 the ignoring The annoying buzz, I think, was so you would pop. That, that, would, always, that would always pull you up off the sofa. <sighs> and uh, <laughs> it's depressing. <sighs> So depressing, especially the weird kind of uh, religious thing with the uh, you know the uh, blue angels yeah. uh, doing the uh, tight formation. A guy yeah, talking yeah. about touching the face of God, <laughs> and the Indian test pattern. I think the way it had all these multicolor circles around it. I think but that was colors, so the guys black could, and white. Well, so, then it turned Some kind color. of test the reception kind of thing. Yeah, for that. It, I, I don't know. It, it, it was uh, it was like you so you could like white balance your, your it, camera it had, like, or railroad something. signs on, on the yeah. Corner I, I, don't I don't know. Like, I don't, someone's got to get to the bottom <laughs> of this. And look, I would pay a uh, hundred bucks for a uh, for a, a DVD that had the uh, touch of faith. That's the airtime that the Native there. Americans have managed to hold on to. Yeah, even that was played by Jew. <laughs> by the way, that ended. They, they put the brown makeup on him, and they put him in a headdress. It was a Jew. I know that for a fact. <laughs> All right. Seth McFarlane uh, in the studio tonight. We'll uh, take a, a quick break. We'll be right back after this. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Seth McFarlane in the uh, studio tonight. Family guy, of course. And uh, Seth's got a uh, new show just coming out called uh, Wait Till Your Father Gets Home. What the hell is it called? <laughs> or is it the, American Dad. It's American, American Dad. Dad. Yeah, just keep watching uh, the Super Bowl. Wait, is Super Bowl on Fox this year? Uh, I guess it must be if they're premiering it after. Uh, that's, that's just, yeah, that makes sense, right? I think that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Fox has the Super Bowl. It's it, Don't get used to that lead-in, by the way, because the following week should be like a rerun of the Parkers. Yeah. It's going to... Uh, it doesn't always work out. Like, the, the, the shows that succeed that premiere after the Super Bowl are actually the exception of the rule. So, I, I you know... Is it? Well, I... I the, can, the Wonder Years, I think, was the... Exception? That was the big one. Yeah. yeah. And, again, the family guy, I remember uh, Seth saying that that premiered after uh, the Super Bowl 2000 to 99? Uh, 99. 99. Yeah, 99. I think. Well, it must have been uh, early 99 because the Super Bowl would have been very early January. 99. 99 or now beginning of February. It keeps getting, it keeps moving back, mm-hmm. by the way. Uh, all right. Another question for uh, Seth over here. Mark? Yes. You're 25. What's up? How you doing? Uh, Seth, I wanted to, two questions, two quick questions. I want to ask you, what is your personal favorite episode and Death why? Death lives. Death lives. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, boy, that's, you know, I, I, I always have trouble answering that question. Hold on, it, don't answer. Drew, write your personal... Uh, I don't uh, know the names of them, though. I know the well, d d describe it enough so that uh, we can sort of uh, ver verify it. I'm not going to look. Okay. <laughs> Ever. Go ahead, yours. I'm never going to look that way again. And then, uh, well, let's see. I'm going to... Uh, mine real quick while you guys are writing. No, we're here. Well, well, well it'll be, be better about that. I'm, I'm going to write the... Uh, uh, okay, yeah, I already said mine. It's okay. it's the it's the voyage. Yeah. It's the fantastic voyage oh, yeah, when Stewie yeah. kills the sperm. What what's yours, Mark? Uh, da boom, probably. Which Interesting. One Which one? The, the, the most dated of all of our. It's the Y two K episode. Remember? Remember Y two K? Right. Right. <laughs> remember that. Um, the chicken fight is just just classic, man. You can't. How can you? Well, I got news for you. That chicken's not. No, that, that chicken uh, may not oh. be dead. Yeah, you fought the chicken out front of the store. I mean, he tried to hand you a leaflet or something, and it's, it went all oh, over yeah, onto yeah, the yeah. train. It's and possible he may not be dead, and he, he may, may show be, up again. Yeah, he, wow. he may, may that be was, back for Yeah, that was, the, that was the Y2K one. Yeah. 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 So anyway, yours, Seth? Sorry. Uh, uh, you know, probably if I had to pick one that's just uh, kind of us at our, at our best would probably be Road to Rhode Island. Which one okay. is that? That's, that's, uh, that's the, the first Brian Stewie road show. Because yeah. it, it was sort of the first show where we really... Which one is? Is that where they find... Uh, it's where they go across the country to find Brian's mother. And it, it, yeah, it, it was really that... sort of the first use of... Uh, oh, was that, was that yours? It says... Uh, Look at that. First it says I'm gay. <laughs> I don't know why we, we need to write a sexual re revelation that in was... there. And then it says... Uh, fr uh, finding, finding Brian's, Brian's Look mom. at that. Um, wow. Yes, finding Brian's wow. mom. Wow. Look at that. Wait, that That's amazing. extraordinary. Amazing you were able to read that from here. <laughs> yeah. You <yeah>. piss ass. <laughs> wow, true. Yeah. Written in a, like a true doctor, by the way. No one could figure it that. out. <laughs> wow. That, yeah, I like it. Now, is that the one where they do the uh, Hope and uh, That's the one, yeah. That, Crosby that, that, song? Yeah. That's the one. It, it, it was, it was like sort of the one. first uh, time we really kind of got a handle on that Brian Stewie relationship that could carry a, an episode. So yes. Good. Their scenes together are so great. They're just so great. Brian's mom turned out to be stuffed, right? Yes. yes. As yes. I recall. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Uh, good. It sort of episode. starts like a uh, babe with a mom. He's being taken away. From yeah. The <laughs> from the puppy mill, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. All right, uh, Mark, thanks for uh, kissing ass. <laughs> One more thing? No? Uh, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Some of the jokes are so absurd when you watch them. I'm wondering how, how difficult it is to write them. I'll give you an example. Peter's a little excited wiggle after he says the Luke Perry thing where he goes, <laughs> which is probably my favorite joke out of all the episodes <laughs> ever. Uh, uh, Peter's, oh, you mean where he was uh, trying to make Luke Perry gay? Yeah, where he does his little excited wiggle. I can't, I can't tell you how many times I rewound that when I first saw it. <laughs> it's, it's, Oh you know, that, that that was just one of those, like the evil monkey, that was just one of those examples of one of the writers in the room, and I can't for the life of me remember who it was, did that and said, don't know why it's funny, it's funny, is there some way we can animate that? So uh, we kind of acted it out for the artists, and they uh, they they uh, put it up on screen. I, I, it doesn't mean anything. It's just kind of a stupid little uh, gesture that he does. Yeah, it's not a, a ref. I mean, it's not a reference to no. anything, right? All right. All right. I'll tell you, uh, people are dedicated uh, followers yeah. of the show. Yeah, it's it's it's, nice. it's interesting. You know, I, there are things that I don't remember. I have to be reminded. Uh, oh yeah. Oh no no. There's always a nerd out there who knows your work <laughs> better than you. you. Yeah yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll uh, go to the phones and talk to uh, Lindsay, who's twenty. Lindsay. Hi. What's up, baby doll? Um, I just had a question. Like, I used to have a really high sex drive. Like, mm -hmm. I used to have to have sex, like, three or four times a day. Mm -hmm. And my doctor put me on an antidepressant. And right. when she put me on that, it, like, made my sex drive, like, cease to exist. Mm -hmm. So I stopped taking it, and it's still, I very rarely have the interest in having sex. Hmm. And I, I don't know if it's because, like, my boyfriend has a really high sex drive, and it just doesn't interest me as much, or if mm -hmm. it's something that the medication did. It's a very interesting question. She needs her pump primed, Drew. So to speak. Yeah. Great opportunity to get some work done. Yeah. Yeah. It's like Seth in high school. How, uh... <laughs> Except for the tears were smearing the, the ink. Oh, on the you page. have no idea. It was a dismal, <laughs> dismal time. Uh, Seth, you and I could hang. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how, how long have you been off the antidepressant? I've been off them for a couple of months. And how long were you on it for? 
for about two months. I took them for about two months, and then I stopped yeah. taking them because my boyfriend started complaining that I never wanted to have sex. And, and are you on any other medication at all right now? No. No birth control pills? Nope. Huh. And which, which medication was it? It was amitriptyline. Really? That's an old-fashioned one. Yeah. yeah. It's, and that one is not known for killing the sex drive the way some of the other ones do. How come it's not used anymore? Because there's much better medicines. Oh. Way better. Thank your doctor. Yeah. <laughs> unless uh, you know, unless you know, they were trying to just help you with sleep. Hemotriptyline is not a bad sleep medicine. Yeah, I used to. I, my depression caused me to have insomnia instead of mm -hmm. wanting to sleep all the time. Yeah. So mm -hmm. they put me on the amitriptyline because it had the least amount of side effects, and it would yeah. help with sleeping. But it's an interesting question. I, I imagine there are things that can sort of be residual from antidepressants, but this is not typically one of them. It makes me think more that perhaps you were more manic or maybe you have a bipolar condition. Yeah, maybe. I'm a manic depressive bipolar. All right. So now you've, you've flipped back into a more depressed state and you're still there. So you need to talk. You need to see a psychiatrist. You really oh. do. This It's not a psychiatrist been treating. You, you've got to get your chemistry set up, so to speak. Okay. You need to be on a mood stabilizer. It'll be much more effective for you, and it won't affect your your uh, your sex drive. You won't want sex three times a day, but you'll want it normally. The reason you want it three times a day is you were hypomanic, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Any All right. suggestions as far as a mood stabilizer or? Uh, Norantin, Depakote, lithium. There are all sorts of things being done right now. The, the, well, it depends me... what your doctor thinks you need. As a woman, by the way, how into it do you really have to Tri be? Trileptol. It's a good one. You who have been faking your orgasms for, you know, millions of years. <laughs> you, but you know what? I think the one thing guys appreciate, and they rarely get, they're so, women are so interested in, in trying to figure out what the technique is they need to apply. All a guy really would put guy over the top, it seems to me, is a girl who's actually enthusiastic. Yeah. Or actually excited about being there. Right. That'd be like a, uh, an unusual experience for a guy. Right. Right? It'd be like, oh, my God. Yeah. He's excited about being here with me. How does that work? Yeah, no, we, we, we want that. We we yeah. want, yeah. It's like we would rather have a dog that was happy to see us when we yeah. came through the door right. than one that got the slippers. Right. That's right? right? Absolutely. All right, so there you go, ladies. But, hey, if, if the dog can get the same dog and bring the slippers, too, I mean, that's a keeper, right? Right. 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 I don't even know what I'm saying. No. <laughs> <Neither> <laughs> does, does anyone know what that means? Just... No, I don't the know analogy has gone scramble. far off course. I, I, sometimes I get I get lost in my own analogies, and I think that we're actually talking about dogs or cars. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, <laughs> let's talk to uh, let's talk to Chloe up here, Drew. Okay. Chloe, Hi. sixteen. Yeah. You're an actress. Yeah, I I do uh, independent movies. You do. Mm hmm All right, you're sixteen. Yeah. Seth, uh, Seth is not going to be able to have sex with you for another two years. Oh, I'm sorry, Chloe. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, um. I have, well, as you can tell, I have a problem with uh, wanting to go after older men. I have mm -hmm. been after 20-year-olds and 30-year-olds. Mm -hmm. That you work with. Yeah. Are you going to high school now? Yeah. So you go to high school and you work with adults? Yeah. Well, okay. I do it over the summer. You, you do movies over the summer? Yeah. All right. Any okay. movies we've heard of, by the way? Well, it's not out yet. It's a paintball movie. Paintball? Uh, yeah. That I'll go see. Okay. <laughs> it's called Painted Forest. Painted Forest. Ooh, wow. Yeah. Oh, what's the story? You got to tell us the story. Oh, I, um, well, I'm it... in a, a, a team that's against another team, and we we fight in these woods, and we come across these thieves in this trailer, and they're mm -hmm. stealing money from over time. It's, it's a really good yeah, right, right, story, but farmers. no, this is, pot farmers. This is. Uh, I'll tell you what. This is, it's Southern Comfort. Right. From uh, 1981, like, right. where uh, they were out uh, training. You see this movie, Seth? Mm. There, it's like some Army Reserve group that's out training with uh, no actual live ammo, but out in like the uh, swamplands or something. And because you know we're going to fight our next war in a swamp, you know, <laughs> uh, and uh, run across some actual bad guys. So th they're armed with nothing but the paintball. Right. Uh, that's what I'm saying. All right. Yeah. That paintball is a whole yeah. parallel universe. Oh yeah. Oh. You got a culture there. All right. So and. Uh, Who'd you, uh, who'd you, did you have sex with somebody? Oh, no, um, no, but I went after this one guy named Shannon, and he was really close to doing it, but then he said, since I'm illegal, he couldn't do it. How old is he? He was 20. All right, right. look, it's oh, normal good. for you to be attracted to older guys. That, that, it's, that's okay. It doesn't mean you should 
make a habit of it or think that it's good for you. And uh, this guy thankfully set a boundary in an appropriate place. Yeah. Just, just c cool out a little bit. Relax. It's, uh, it's not going to be good. Any, any guy that responds to it is not going to be yeah. good for you. And by the way, Shannon, gay. <laughs> not, not, <laughs> not scruples, know? gay. He's, come on, he's, he's 20, he's in a paintball movie, his name's Shannon. Yeah. And he's yeah. turning Chloe. down a hot 16-year-old named Chloe. <laughs> That's, uh, nobody with scruples in this business. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I could see if you guys were, you know, this was just high school and he was a, a student teacher or something, or, you know, doing something like that, turning down that, you might get, but not actor. That's just gay. He's I don't think I know any male Shannons. No, a lot of female Shannons. Right. It's, it, it's a chick name, that's why. Mm. All right, let's, uh, let's take ourselves a uh, little break. Yeah, him? sure. Yes, Seth mm -hmm. McFarlane uh, in the studio tonight. Always a delight. We'll uh, take a quick break. We'll be right back. Yeah, everybody, love line. Dr. Drew over there, me over here, Seth McFarlane. Well, just uh, he's uh, facing Mecca. I Unacceptable. Didn't even know. And uh, <laughs> that is that is him. All right. Mm. Uh, family Guy, of course, uh, coming back uh, to a television set near you very soon. And uh, this time, I, I, I imagine a much anticipated. Uh, we we hope we're on to stay this time. It's been uh, yeah. It's been off and on for five years, but uh, you know we're we're hoping this is it. it it's got to be nice. I mean, uh, uh, I've uh, started a couple of TV shows uh, along with my partners, and it's always tough that very beginning part where it's like, huh? And there's always some other TV show that is crappy, but reminds everyone of uh, your show, and it's <laughs> so it's like. So it's, the man show is going to be like the X show, but it's only going to be on once. Yeah, okay, all right, all right. It's, a, it, it's nice when you can actually have the product, people know what it is, and are waiting for more of it. It's yeah. almost like Star Wars or something. It feels. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 a, it's a very it's it's a kind of an unprecedented situation that you know we're we're basically premiering a new show. I mean, not a new show. It's going to be the same show, but it's it's you know the following is already there, um, right? Which is you know. Makes it a hell of a lot easier, obviously. Yeah, yeah, and people know what it is when they're talking about it. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, let's take a uh, question for Seth from Sandy. Sandy, hey, what's up? Hey, you're twenty. What's up? Um, one quick comment: the in the Y two K episode when they say the two Denny's comments, is that the Denny's in Culver City? <laughs> uh, not. Uh, well, God, two Denny's. Not so we can say not. not I don't remember Denny's what the line is. That Denny's. What's the line? Uh, let's build two Denny's, where we can say, that's, gonna, that's not go to that Denny's, and let's go to the good Denny's. Oh, God, I have no idea. Because I it was so long ago. The and I, the <laughs> in Culver City. But my main question is, is Stewie really gay? Uh, we, we're, we're, we're leaving that one up in the air. We, 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 uh, we don't know. He's, he's kind of thus far uh, experimented with both <laughs> sides, and, uh, you know, he's only a year old, so he's, he's got plenty of time to figure it out, and... Uh, you know, we're, 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 we're saving that one. Don't we have a Stewie drop where he comments? And then I think to myself, my God, wouldn't it be marvelous if I turned out to be a homosexual? Yeah. That was from the last time I was here, I remember, because I had a bad cold, and you can hear it. Yes. Oh, really? You yeah. can hear it? I yeah. can't hear it. Sounds good. Or maybe better. Uh-oh. <laughs> Ooh, freaking Oh, setback. God. Uh, well, the, uh, the episode where uh, Stewie uh, fell in love with the uh, young girl yep. in his romper room class was a great episode, too, by the way. Jilted though. At the How about end. where he gets in with the cheerleaders? Oh yeah, nice. yeah. See, there's yeah. there's that she side, and the then ladies. at the same, then then you see him uh, at the at the gay bar dancing to the techno music. Uh -huh. So it's uh, we yeah. we play both sides of it. He's got range. I yeah, like, I yeah. like when he sung uh, Rocket Man. <laughs> see that episode? Right? That was you know it's such an obscure reference to that that William Sh and that was actually the episode we found out we were canceled. So we figured ah what the hell let's do something do fun I, for yeah. us like. Shatner Duplicating reference. Shatner's rendition of that exactly, and actually, if you put that up next to the Shatner version, every tiny gesture is is exactly mimicked by Stewie. Wow! Yeah, it's great now because now Shatner pretends like, oh well, it's all <laughs> yeah. done tongue in cheek. No, yeah, you yeah. are deadly serious about that, Bill. <laughs> uh, He's still figuring out who he is. Oh, that was a good time when you see nowadays everyone's sister comes out with them, but. Back in uh, the day, if you were on TV, you cut an album. You know, Is that right? Hoss from Bonanza had a, you know, Hoss sings the hits. I yeah, mean, everyone yeah. who was on TV 
sung. And it was, it'd be like, yeah, uh, Leonard Nimoy, you're doing an album. It's like, I, I don't sing. Uh, it doesn't matter. You're doing it. Shatner would just talk his way through those uh, Beatles songs. You ever hear, hear him do it? But it was it was it was connected oh, to it wasn't crazy. he? He would read uh, passages from poetry or from Shakespeare or from literature, and then find a song that I guess was somehow thematically connected, and then segue into the uh, into the song from the spoken. Yeah, give us a little shot. You don't even have to do Stewie. Just give do Shatner doing Stewie <laughs> doing uh, Rock doing Elton John. <laughs> she packed my bags. Last night, pre-flight, <laughs> zero hour, 9 a.m. <laughs> and I'm going to be high <laughs> Drew, as a kite by then. Drew, you're really, uh, missing you're really, out. You're really missing out. Ooh. Yeah. You know about all that? No. I mean, they, like, Lauren Green had a, had a hit. <laughs> I swear to God. Art Carney had an album out. Wow! Yeah, that, uh, one of our writers brought in. It was a Christmas album, and it's the stupidest thing you've ever heard. It's it's, it's Art Carney, and the song is "All I Want for Christmas Is a Doodly Dupe." He sings over and over and over. It's never explained exactly what it is. It's just this repetitive thing that makes you want to blow your brains out. Ooh. Yeah, true. Where where you yeah. been? Wow! You yeah. ever heard Shatner sing? It's awesome. Mm -hmm. Gets into the Beatles, just like uh, loosing the sky. He's with a the versatile audience. guy. Oh, yeah. He's a magical man. Yeah. Oh, my God. Lisa? Yes. You're 25? Yes. What, what's up, baby doll? Um, well, let's see. My boyfriend and I have been together for almost three years now, and we hardly have sex anymore. Or actually, mm -hmm. it's been that way pretty much the whole time we've been together. Whole time. After the first couple weeks. Why, um, why have you stayed together? Um... Well, he makes me sense. laugh. He's my best friend. We get along uh -oh. great. Uh-oh. <laughs> best friend. <laughs> well, I think me. a lot of it has to do with the fact that um, shortly after we got together, I got pregnant. And now he says that he doesn't want to have sex because it freaks him out because he's scared that I'll get pregnant. And All right. I don't you really had an abortion? Did. did you have an yes. abortion? Yeah. Okay. Uh, no. How old is he? He's twenty-four. Yeah, it just doesn't fit. Something, something's wrong. Is he doing drugs? No. Hmm. Huh. And uh, the best friend, I, I don't know. I, I'd say this one's done. I don't. I don't. I just don't know what it is. I mean, it doesn't feel. I mean, it just doesn't feel like uh, a twenty-four and twi twenty-five-year-old are having a relationship. Are you guys sure? Are you deeply in love with him? I am, but I mean, there's a lack of intimacy, and I've had, uh, you know, I've tried to talk to him about it several times, tried to fix the problem, and, you know, of course, tried not to, like, you know, hurt his feelings or anything. I yeah. don't think I have. Well, what, what's he good for in a month? In a month? Yeah, how many yeah. times? Like, probably Point maybe three. two. <laughs> two. Two in a month. All right. I wonder if that's just his rhythm. It, it, once in a while, you get a guy who's uh, basically got a uh, sloth in his underpants. Yeah. No, um, literally. Literally. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. Literally. It's tough to have sex around that sloth. No, yeah. it's, it's, you've seen the claws on yeah. those things? <laughs> and they're very territorial. And they hang upside mm. down from anything that sort of And they, they treat out. your nuts like uh, the cubs. They're just like a little sloth cubs. They're very protective. They're fascinating creatures. They really are. Okay. So... That could be his rhythm, and sometimes you can, uh, you know, go in there and flip his uh, metronome a little bit and get him to pick up the pace, but he's never going to be three times a day. Right. There are a lot of, we don't know that about him, though. There could be a lot of explanations for this, including maybe it's not Lisa, maybe there's other things going on, maybe he's gay, maybe, who knows? Yeah. I mean, we don't know. I'm... Also, once in a while, there are these guys who get in relationships, and then once it becomes this sort of long-term relationship they just become their partner yeah, these yeah. the guys start calling their uh, old lady mommy Jeez. or even old lady <laughs> wait a minute oh i'm screwed i gotta get home i get home and bang the bejesus out of my wife right now <laughs> i understand true you're coming with me <laughs> i need backup <laughs> hey, hey, mommy all right i don't i don't know what the answer is other than go ahead and tell the guy what you want and you know, three years, you guys been together from, he was 21, you were 22, now you're in your mid-20s. It's it's time to sort of ask or get off the pot. Yeah, it doesn't sound like a great relationship, even though you sort of, on one hand, call it a great friendship and a great friend. 
you explicitly say there's no intimacy, and that's not a great way to... Sust that, that isn't going to be a, a relationship that's satisfying over the long haul. Right. All right. Let's... Uh, speaking of uh, unsatisfying... <laughs> Leah? Hi. You're 21? Yes, I am. What's the matter? Um, well, I'm six months pregnant. I've been on and off in this relationship for about three and a half years, and he is 12 years my senior, and I got pregnant, and six months pregnant, he decided that it was a good idea for him to leave, and he's, like, extremely immature and, like, doesn't, I don't know. All he right. doesn't know how to, um, like, be an adult, you know? All right. All right. So, uh, what's he do? Construction? Wow, that was a pretty good guess. No, he owns his own business. He's an electrician. Wow. Way off. Way off. Oh, dare. I thought he was but in the construction same, field. Same area, though. Thank you. Yeah, I know these guys. I work with them. They don't, their kids don't have names. They call them the kid. The yeah. kid and the old lady. Uh, they, uh, they, well, the kid wants a retainer, but I'm getting a new Kirk or Pipe for the jet ski. Screw them. Look at my teeth. They're fine. I didn't have a retainer. You're only going to lose it. Sorry, it's a bad guy. You shouldn't have let him impregnate you, but now he has. Mm -hmm. I don't know that you can draw him back or make him, you know, more mature than he actually is. I, I don't think you should expect much from him. Uh, if you're going to have this kid, and you are, he has to be financially responsible. Right. He's he, obliged to be involved, but good, stuck good, good luck getting it out of him. Right, it's not going to be a great experience. All right, so Leah, mm -hmm. um, if he's out, you can't, you can't make him interested in something he's not interested in. And that makes him a bad guy, and it makes you stupid for being with a bad guy. Yeah. Okay. Much. And uh, now the kid's got to pay the consequences. That's fine. You be as good a mom as you can. You'll find a guy soon enough. The kid will have a solid stepdad. Make sure that's the right guy. And this guy can pay child support. Well, but my, like, my big... No, nah, I summed it up. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. There's no going back from that. We're finished. I'm, I'm, I'm like the dealer at the blackjack table does this and this. And you're going, blah, 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 I want another hit. No, no. You're just looking at the back of the uh, tight Asian ass on those women. Very, okay. A quick break. Be right back. Yeah, everybody. It's Loveline. All right. I want to thank uh, the great Seth McFarland for uh, coming in here. Thank tonight. you, you guys. Always, always a delight. And, uh... <laughs> Look uh, look forward to uh, American Dad, which is uh, coming out. And I forgot to ask uh, Seth if he does voices on, and he must. I do. I do a couple of voices on uh, on American Dad. I do the uh, father and the alien. And uh, we have a... Oh, you do the alien. Wow. Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. don't give too much away. Oh, but that's the Paul Lynn. Yeah. Oh, do you do a Paul Lynn? I do, One yeah. One shot. Give yeah. us a shot yeah. of Paul Lynn. Uh, Ma'am. Ed Sullivan show. <laughs> there you go, Paul. Lynn. Yeah. We have a great cast. Uh, uh, Wendy Shaw doing Francine, who's the mom. Uh, Dee Bradley Baker is an extremely talented voiceover actor doing the fish, German-speaking fish. Oh, wow. Um, oh, my sister Rachel. Oh, really? Through no involvement of my she's own. Good too, believe right? it or not, yeah, she's really wow. Yeah. Is is the uh, daughter? And was 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 uh, we had cast someone else in the network. Uh, they took her. Fish and said, just so you know, we. would like you to use Rachel and uh, Scott Grimes doing uh, the son Steve, who's uh, on ER. We're going to uh, take a little extendo break because hey we're real quick. way past due. In all my years, I've never heard you guys kiss as much ass in one night. More than oh, Alex yeah. Baldwin, anyone else? <laughs> really? Yeah. Huge ass. I think, I, I, think I, 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 I greased up Baldwin's ass pretty good. <laughs> not in the air as so much as that. Not in the air so much. Oh, I'll, I'll take it. Not in the air. I'll take all it. All right. So until next time, it's Adam Crawler for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. And I'm going to be high. This has been Loveline. Loveline. The opinions expressed in this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Annie Gold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.